Thank you, Mr. Face and Fire for having this morning. At this time, we're going to turn it over to our trustee group. Verses 1 through 8, 14 through 24, and 37 through 39. And the subject is fear and trust. Our lesson began with the Pentecost. And the lesson states that on that day, <clears throat> the disciples were all together in one place on one accord. <clears throat> and without warning, it says without warning, a sound came from heaven a strong wind, like a gale force wind, and it filled the whole house where they were meeting. Then, then what looked like flames of flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on them. Now all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in different languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. There were many godless Jews from all over the world staying in Jerusalem. And when they heard the sound, the crowd came together to see what was going on, but was confused because every one of them heard the disciples speak in their own native language. And then it says, uh, <clears throat> the crowd, the crowd was amazed and said one to another, said, uh, are all these Galileans speaking? We hear all these different languages, but I thought all these were Galilee. And how is it that all we all hear our own tongue, the language where we were born? And they, they stood, and this little 9 through 13 is not in our lesson, not in the printed part of our lesson, but you got to read that and connect it with the other. And, and they stood amazed. They all heard the disciples speaking their own language describing God's mighty works. Some mocked them and said they were drunk. Then Peter had had enough. He stood up and he told him, told, stood up with the eleven. He said, uh, these people, so you listen, men of Judea, you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. These are not drunk as you assume, saying it is only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel spoke of. He told us that God said in the last days he would pour out his spirit on every kind of people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. He said, but um, I will also pour out my spirit on the servants and handmaids in those days that they shall prophesy not going to leave anybody out. And he said, I will cause strange demonstrations in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. He said, the sun shall turn black, turn to darkness, and the moon into blood before the great day of the Lord arrives. He said, but anyone who asks for mercy from the Lord shall have it and shall be saved. You men of Israel, listen to the captain. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved and accredited by God to you, the miracles, signs, and wonders that God did through him, that's common knowledge. And he says, this Jesus, following the plan of God, was betrayed by men, took the law, men who took the law into their own hands, and was handed over to you. You crucified and killed him. And they said, <clears throat> But God raised him up. Death was no match for him. And then uh, Peter told them, said, this Jesus whom you crucified, God made him master and Messiah. And there was much sorrow in their heart. And when they heard that, and they asked Peter, 
said, well, what shall we do? What we going to do? Peter told us, repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For Christ promised this to each one of you who has been called by the Lord our God, and to your children, and even to those in distant lands. Now, as we look at some of the things in, things in this lesson, the book of Acts is really is a book about overcoming barriers. The, the disciples faced many barriers, but they, but they were also commanded to spread the gospel. They had been advised to wait in Jerusalem until the Lord was to the, until they had received power from on high. And they know after Christ's resurrection, he would appear and then he'd be gone. He'd appear again and he'd be gone. The disciples were fearful. They were fearful of the Jewish leaders. So they were locked up in this room. And as it said, they had gathered behind the closed doors, fearful of the Jewish leaders. But the lesson reads that in one place, they were all in one place and one accord. And just think what we could do if we could get a one accord. I, I can only imagine. And, uh, and when the Holy Ghost came, you know, it overcame a lot of language barriers, a lot of social barriers. And, and the people said, you know, they are speaking our language. What's going on here? Peter explained all that to them. And another point I want you to notice, you notice that this situation is just a reversal of the situation in Genesis 11, 1 through 9. And here in Genesis, they spoke one language, and, and, but they wanted to build a name for the city by building a tower. So then this tower to reach up to heaven, they wanted people to see just how how their technology, how smart, how intellectual they were. So they want to build this tower. This is in Genesis. They want to build the tower to reach heaven. And, and God came down to look over the city. And the tower, look over the city and the tower. And it says that um, that he said, one people, one land. He said, now they want to mess this up. There's no telling what they'll be doing next. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do something different, he said. I'm gonna have to stop this. And he <clears throat> and said, we'll go down and we'll confuse them and that and confuse their speech. They won't be able to understand each other. And then I'll scatter them throughout all over the world. They had to quit building because they could no longer understand each other's language. They didn't know what each other were talking about. So they had to quit building. And that's why I said it was called Babel, because God turned that language into Babel. Mm -hmm. And you see, and when you line that up with what happened here, when the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. you see, the people who are similar with the oneness and the pride without God at Babel, they left in disharmony and confusion. And but the one who was civil for a different reason at Pentecost, with their hearts open to a God, they actually experienced closeness, community, as the Spirit overrode all the barriers. See, Pentecost was a reversal of the Tower of Babel where the language became confused and nation was separated by misunderstanding in Genesis. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit gathered persons from every nation into a unified fellowship. Just the opposite. God collected people from all over the world. And then when it when Genesis, he scattered them all over the world. This is just, just a reverse. And, and you know, <clears throat> he says, he says, these people, you know, they didn't, they didn't honor God. When they decided they're going to build a tower, they didn't consult God. They would just thought they were so intelligent, just like a lot of us today. They just go ahead and build. And they were coming along on it pretty good until God came down. 
It says no. Uh uh. No. He said, I'll fix that. And we and, and you know, no matter how we try to do, no matter how we try to do God's will, there's gonna be some trials that's going on. Mm -hmm. And these disciples that they were having a time. And it seemed like no matter what they did, uh, they were up one day, down the next day, because they were unsure about a lot of things, and they were very afraid of the Jewish leaders. So <clears throat> they prayed, they, they opened themselves up to God, but still sometimes it seemed like they were stumbling. And that's just the way we are. Mm -hmm. And you know, no matter how we try to do God's will, we're gonna go through something. Amen some trials. And sometimes God will move the oxen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll lead us around the oxen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he'll lead us right through it. Mm -hmm. Because he says he's going to be with us whenever we go through whatever we go through. That's right. So uh, we have to, sometimes he just have to, we just have to trust God. And that's what the disciples had to do. We have to trust God like they did. And, and you have to get to a point where, as you grow in the Lord, you get to a point where you say, well, I can't worry about that. And that, you know, that's in God's hand. And sometimes, like myself, when I say, when things are going on, and I say, well, Lord, I ain't going to stay up all night worrying about this, because you're going to be up anyway. So at least both of us did that. <laughs> and I don't know what to do, because if I could fix it, I wouldn't call you. <laughs> so I said, you know, get to God, but you grow, as you grow, it takes time, and it takes a lot of experience to be able to do that and to be able to turn it loose. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you get to God that morning, and by lunchtime, he hadn't worked it out. You're ready to take it back and try it to see. And, and we're only human. We all do stuff like that. Doesn't mean we're bad people. Doesn't mean we're people that don't trust God. But we just haven't got to the point where we can get to God and leave it. And, and we will. Mm -hmm. And see, no matter what it is or how hard to try it, God said he's with us. Mm -hmm. for, for those of us who follow the Lord, eternity in heaven is just beyond our last heartbeat. If we can just hold on and hold out. So it, it, takes, it takes a lot. And, and some days you like you're doing that well. Like you, you've done it you've done it, good. And you feel right the time of proud of yourself. Down the road a week or two, bang. Some hit you that you feel like you can't hardly shake. But God is still with us. God is still with us. And we know if we can just keep on, if we can just hold on, you know, we can make it. And as long as he is here, as long as we know we got God, we don't have nothing to worry about. We do worry because unlike the disciples, they were with Jesus at times. They could talk to Jesus and all the discuss things. We are not, because we don't physically see Jesus, although we know the Holy Spirit is with us. We've got something to work with, but we just got to know how to work with it. Amen. Amen. And it, it takes it takes some time. Amen. And then, you know, Whatever you do, you know how it is. Satan's gonna try. That's Just right. when you think you're doing halfway decent, here he comes. Mm -hmm. But you know, I read that some, someone once said that the devil saw me with my head down, and he thought he was winning mm. until he heard me say, "Amen." Mm. Ah, amen. Mm. Yeah, with my head down, he was so sure that you were downtrodden, you were worried, mm. and all that stuff. Mm. But when he heard you say, "Amen." That scared him because he knew you were praying. Mm -hmm. So as we as we go along from time to time, and, and like I said, you know, the best you can do, and I don't care how good you live, you're gonna have some problems. Mm -hmm. Because he said in this world we would have problems. Amen. But we can overcome. He said he'll be right there with us whenever something comes along. Whether good or bad or whatever, he's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And he said, when we go through the valley, he's going to be with us. Yeah. And that's a good thing to know because it's obvious we're going to go through some things in this world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you feel like sometimes 
You don't even deserve that kind of stuff. But you still, you still go through it. That's right. And seem like some good people, you know, bad things happen to good people just like good things happen to bad people. Mm -hmm. And the song that sings farther along, we'll know all about it. And it says, you know, you wonder why other prosper, living so wicked day after day. But they do. But we, we have to think about the fact God is just God. God is looking on us. He knows what we need. He knows who needs discipline. He knows what we need. He knows where we need a blessing. He got it all in control. And since he got it all controlled, there ain't a whole lot we can do. That's right. But remember, he's your guide. Mm -hmm. No matter what's going on, he's the one that, that's going to guide you. If you can stay with him, if you can stay meditate on the word, and sometimes, sometimes no matter what, you have to get right by yourself, just you and God. There are some days when you get up, you don't want to talk, you just want to nobody but God. Mm -hmm. And those that live alone, they ain't got to worry about it because they ain't got nobody else in the house. They talk to you, but God. <laughs> and so sometimes you just you just want to get by yourself, just be God. There are times I don't know about you, but I'm not one who likes to get up and open my blinds first thing in the morning. I like to stay, stay there. And I like to do all my talking to God you know, before I even think about opening blinds. I'm not ready for the work. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready for the world to come in. So that's just the way I am. And you, you know, and when you talk to God at night, you lie down and you talk to God at night, and let that be the last thing you do. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning, let that be the first thing you do. Amen. And ask Him to take over your day, mm -hmm. to guide you, send the Holy yes. Spirit to be with you. And this is what these disciples, if they hadn't had the Holy Spirit, they were amazing. They, they, they were people just like us. Mm -hmm. But like I said, they had the privilege of having been with Jesus, and we didn't. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen him. We didn't walk with him and talk with him like, like they did. But still, he sent the Spirit so that we would have somebody. We would have something to lean on, something consulting. And as we read and meditate on our Bibles, we get a little stronger, and we look at this, and we understand this. And it's amazing when you look back and see you have grown a whole lot. Mm -hmm. We've all grown so much mm -hmm. since we started on this journey. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot that we can thank God for. Amen. And so we, as, we, as we look at it, and we say, Lord, you know, sometimes you wonder, what does God think of me? Am I doing the right thing? And, but the God said, give it to me. You let me decide what's going on. Mm -hmm. and you give it to me. And then he said, you know, as we go along, uh, just like the disciples, you know, we're going to be mocked. If we're believers in Christ, we're going to be talked about. Mm -hmm. We're going to be mocked. We're going to be laughed at. And we're going to be told we don't know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be told that we're, try we're different. We're supposed to be different. We are supposed to be different. We're supposed to act different. We're supposed to talk different. We're supposed to be different. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna, we're, we're gonna be going through some stuff. They're gonna talk about us and then, but you are believing in Christ. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to be different, so you don't worry about it. God got his stamp on you, and that's all that matters. That's right. And you see, so we're gonna deal with some of the same stuff that the disciples dealt with. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell you, it's, it's hard. It's, it's very hard. And he says, uh, <clears throat> but you know what? I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than to stand with the world and be judged by God. Amen. Amen. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for being here. I thank God for, for you. Stand up there again, that awful, wonderful lesson. Man, I just thank God for everything. And like you said, when you're going to go through trials and tribulations, but we got to not let old Satan get next to it because he, 
He traveled to and for, see what he can kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. So we got to keep our mind on the main one and this God. Yeah. Amen. At all times. See, see, God told us that we are going to have to fall. So we know that's coming. Yeah. We, we believe us. We, we know we're going to have to fall. We don't know what time mm -hmm. and don't know how long it's going to last. Because I'm sure I don't know about you, but uh, in the last few years, I've gone through some stuff I never thought I had any deal with. Amen. And then, you know, when you look at that, and you don't know what's down the road. So, you know, and the song says, He brought me through this and He'll bring me through that. And I'm Amen. grateful. But I'm just saying, we've all experienced something in the last few years that we didn't, we didn't expect. Didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. And so, who knows what we have to deal with the next time. And then to the next, we got to think about, look what happened to Christ. They spit on him, stoned him, and then nailed him to the cross. He suffered for the whole entire world and hadn't done anything wrong. And we were born as sinners, so he suffered. We're going to suffer too. If we're going to share in his glory, we're going to share in his suffering. That's right. But when you get time and, and read that, the read about Genesis uh, 11, 1 through 9, and compare that with, with our lesson today, where the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples and they were speaking in different tongues, that is a very interesting comparison. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning of the early church. Yeah. And when they were in one place, they had a power then. But it yet known that uh, they had went and Jesus told them to wait into the room. They left. And they had seen him leave 50 days before. They were made to all of them when, uh, when they came. They were all on one accord in one conversation. They're not just the apostles that came to five hundred twenty disciples. Yeah. But they're on one accord. It's amazing they knew Christ already come within the Holy Spirit. They expected that, but when it came, it was unexpected, so it was surprising to them. It was surprising to all the people. But so that is amazing. I think in life sometimes we get mixed up by speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a gift. I don't take that away. But they saw the power of God that Joel had already prophesied some 800 years earlier that he would pour his spirit on the son and the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 he would pour the spirit on all the son and, and the daughter. Through all generations. Yeah. And, and without the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, we can't do anything. We can't do it. So the, the, the apostles, the disciples, they were there. But they couldn't really start the other church. They started the church. The Holy Spirit fell in. So, so Peter, and after people are made, and, and like I said, you don't say it, all the birth in the living. But they were made. They thought these men were drunk for pizza. It's just now o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I know a couple of people get drunk before now. Yeah, I do. But <laughs> it, 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 See, in order to do this work, in order to do it, you got to have the help of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and I like it in the, the book where it talks about uh, uh, tombstone, because, you know, I love walking up. And I, and I, look, I, and I, I can tell you the whole story about without holiday. But it's good to have a friend. Yeah. The dog and the wife have made friendship before 
He got he came up with a car cowboy. The doctor said, "This is my friend," and this way Christ did us. Say, "You are our friend, my friend. I'm a lead you. So I'm a I'm a savior from the Holy Spirit." And you have spoken to us even when you're home by yourself. You still have some way you speak to the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. This is a problem today that we try to operate without the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We want to do things our way, then we mess up. Lord, send your spirit. His spirit is here for us. I like that song to a friend we have in Jesus. And it's in our book. That we can take all our, all our sin, all our grief unto him. We call us the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this point, they left this the beginning of the early church. And you see, the Holy Spirit came and it, it, it broke down a lot of barriers that was up. Yeah. And, and, it, and, you know, people could, all those people, just plain, simple people could understand, wow, I hear this. He's speaking in my name. How did that happen? And then, you know, don't under, didn't understand, didn't have the facts, so they assumed they were wrong. Yes. And so many times, with, you know, we can get that mixed up. You don't really know what's going on with anybody. Sometimes you don't know what's going on with yourself. Hey, you guys. <laughs> so when you don't know what's going on and you don't have the facts, you need to leave them alone. Why couldn't they say the Holy Spirit? Well, apparently they hadn't. They didn't know nothing about the Holy Spirit. Do they would have had second thoughts? All they know that people act like that when they get drunk or upset. You see that now. I have a white man. He took me every time to someone get active. I think about what he he, he said. He, he told me uh, 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 they made it for people to have a demon in them. Oh, what do you say that with? Because he hit you. They don't allow all that. They don't, they don't allow all that. Right. Right. Amen. So I talked to him about me. He come down and speak to you in the church. But he not worried about, worried about me getting all alive, but this is bad crash. And the population of black people is less than 1%. So mm -hmm. I said, I'll be out for the sun go down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, what I'm saying, sometimes we get confused by speaking tongues. Speaking tongues is a gift, and God gives that gift to some people. And people speaking tongues, they ought to be in church. So they ought to be able to come back and say, it, it's speaking tongues is not. I know a lot of people train you do it. I'm not condemning anybody, but speaking to him in the gift. And on that particular day, when the whole, on the day of Pentecost, see, they, they were there for a reason. Yeah. They were there for a reason because it wasn't there at Pentecost. At Pentecost. And this why so many different nationalities were in Jerusalem because this was a place they used to come at the Bible. Mm -hmm. So they were already there to worship, mm -hmm. but they had never seen nothing like this happen. So, so, so people had to explain to them. Yeah, yeah. Now, and all, I, I, all the people there, when they began to speak, wait a minute, I know these are Galilee, how they speak in my church? I know they uneducated men and stuff, but they speak uh, every race of people there could hear the word being preached in their own native tongue. Mm -hmm. and, we, and let me tell you something, when you are led by the Spirit and you let the Holy Spirit control, when Peter spoke, 3,000 souls will say that they yeah, not yeah, yeah. But because of the fact they're operating under the Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But well, this is why when they tried to build the, the tower in, back in Genesis, that's why they couldn't succeed. They had gone on their own accord. They were gone on their own intellect. They're going to show just how smart they were technology. And with technology. So they just went on here and kept building. But they couldn't finish it because God confused their tongue. And then he scattered them. But when it comes to Pentecost, he, he gathered them from all over the world, and they all came in United Fellowship. Heard the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what got changed. 
There's no other way to change weapons through starvation but through Jesus Christ, the Word of God. And when the people heard this, they were scared. When the people told them what they had did, yeah. they told them what the Holy Spirit, they were pricked at their heart and went, what must I do? Peter, and they were, said they were, and they were ready to, to uh, uh, the chain and, 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 and the church be on one court and preach the word of God. We will see how Pentecost today is see something happen. <laughs> we need a Pentecost. Yeah, we need a Pentecost revival. And you see, these people, they had never experienced anything like that. And so when this was going on, that's the only thing they could think of. They must be wrong. Yeah. So they didn't know any better. Are there any other comments? Thank you for that awesome <coughs> lesson you taught. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If there aren't, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today.
for the Anderson Chapel in St. Stephen Center Church School for May 7, 2023. Sunday School was called to order at 10 o'clock by Deacon Ray May. Opening song was Come By Here by Deacon J. May. Prayer was given by Reverend Faison. Lesson topic, Fear and Trust. Background passage, Acts 2, 1 through 42. Key verse, for the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts 2, 39. Lesson was reviewed for 35 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Remarks were given by representatives from the class. Attendance is 34. Offering is $45.50. The weather is warm. All officers remain the same. City Secretary is the Lord's Lord. You are here to read of the minutes of our dad's theater career. If not, we are going to the minutes as given. At this time, this concludes our first school for the day. We are going to stand and, and be this risk with Amen. 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 